Hey guys, RK here and welcome to my nest. This week for a special edition with to do with the US election south of the border, to me at least, we're gonna do 19 and a half cartoon animals who have run for office. Make America great again. Corporate cartoon characters making it to presidency is culturally effed. All right, let's begin with the first entry on the list here is Mickey Mouse, who in the mayoral race for New York City in 1932, he received a single write-in vote. He was only four years old at the time, which means he would be ineligible anyway. Next up, number two, in 1952, Pogo Possum ran a presidential campaign. His candidacy proved really popular amongst colleges, especially the Ivy League, Harvard, Cornell, MIT, Rice, UCLA, and at least 12 others. Harvard's rally got so out of hand, 28 students were all arrested for a bottle and beer can brawl with club swinging police. Next up, Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks ran in 1960 on the platform of two bicycles in every garage and four Christmases a year. After the success of all of their previous singles, which all reached top 40 in the charts, it was hoped that the song Alvin for President would be the same. Instead, it only maxed at 95 on the Billboard Pop Singles chart. Let's give it a listen! If we're allowed to, if we don't get sued, don't sue us, YouTube. The song caught the attention of presidential hopeful John F. Kennedy, who during the 1960 campaign commented, I'm glad to know I have at least one worthy opponent. He was not referring to Richard Nixon. Also in 1960, Huckleberry Hound ran, but we're gonna jump ahead to 1964 where Majilla Gorilla and Yogi Bear were both competing against each other. Majilla Gorilla's platform was, you want it, you got it. And Yogi Bear ran with the platform of, whatever our opponents may promise, we promise you more. Yogi Bear's running mate was Huckleberry Hound after his unsuccessful run for presidency in 1960. If you haven't seen our Tumblr page yet, tumblr.com slash blog slash culturally eft, I think, link in the description. We've been posting a lot of these presidential campaign buttons and advertisements. They're a lot of fun and they're pretty quirky if you want to check that out. From 1960 onwards to present day, Snoopy from Peanuts has been running with the platforms of pizza on every table and federal aid to surfing. New York State was looking bad till Snoopy made a speech. So Illinois and Tennessee were in 1980, presidential candidate Ronald Reagan faced his own race. He asked the cartoonist Charles Schultz if there was anything he could do to talk Snoopy out of running and if he would be interested in a position on the cabinet. In 1976 began a very infamous campaign for Howard the Duck with the slogan, Get Down America! With that slogan, I'm wondering if it was had to do more with disco, like, get down America, or if it was more to do with like the Cold War, like, get down America. Either way, he was part of the All Night Party, which appeared in his fictional comic book series, but ended up getting him thousands of real life write-in votes in that election. Fun fact on Earth 65 in the Spider-Gwen books, a human named Howard T. Duck is in fact the President of the United States. In 1984 and 1988, Bill the Cat ran, he is from the Bloom County comic strip, with his running mate Opus the Penguin as part of the National Radical Meadow Party. The Demon, also known as Etrigan, Etrigan, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. He ran with the Republican Party, and since he was an actual demon from hell, he was forced to drop out of the race once he was tricked into banishing himself back there. So this one is fascinating. I learned about it when doing the research for this. Dustin the Turkey, a popular Irish television puppet, received thousands of votes in the Republic of Ireland's 1997 presidential election. Though he wasn't officially on the ballot, there were rumors that he came in fifth place ahead of an actual candidate. In 1997, Daffy Duck ran in his book Daffy Duck for President, and in 2004 they made an animated short about it. Can you imagine anything so ridiculous as majority rule? His platform was to eliminate duck season and instead have a perpetual rabbit season. 
Daffy Duck was eventually defeated by none other than Bugs himself. I don't have Bugs, but I got Space Jam. In 2004, Felipe from the webcomic Akewood would run his own party called the Finding Nemo Party. The idea behind their platform was they took all the best parts of both the Republicans and the Democrats and got rid of all of the bad. In 2008, Cobra Commander ran in Attack of the Show as a comedy bit. He is the leader of the terrorist organization Cobra, and he ran on the platform of being overtly evil as opposed to just like subtly evil like the rest of the political candidates. His running mate was Destro, and his campaign slogan was, YES WE SHALL! He lost his votes, but he claims he will run again. In the 2010 Polish election, none other than Cthulhu himself began his first entry into politics. You may have noticed this year in 2016, he has been prominent again, but in the American election. For more on Cthulhu, check out our episode on HP Lovecraft. He ran with the Elder Party and the slogan, Why Vote for the Lesser Evil? Cthulhu for President. You can check out their websites, Cthulhu for President and Cthulhu for America. Ed the Sock, a sock puppet here from Toronto on MTV. Yes, he is in fact an anthropomorphic sock. He ran in the 2011 Canadian federal election with the Fed Up Party. Also called the FU Party, they stated their goals included fighting apathy and stupidity in government. Throughout the campaign, the FU Party News Center posted various links and articles trying to encourage people to go out and vote, criticizing the political establishment, especially the current Harper government, and trying to stop the re-election of Stephen Harper. Ed declared victory for the FU Party on April 28th, 2011, citing that they had successfully assailed apathy after the record turnout at the advanced polls. I know I had voted in the advanced polls. And finally, in 2015, President Snakes became a popular meme here on YouTube with their Nerd Folk album of the same name. President Snakes is a candidate made up of five snakes. While losing the election, she usually does well with the swing states. So that's it. Our final half point goes to Waldo the Bear from Black Mirror's episode, The Waldo Moment. In 2013, a fictional satirical talk show host, who is a motion-captured cartoon bear, runs for office and places second ahead of a real political candidates. Inciting riots and upheaval, the end credits implies that the political movement goes global and creates a futuristic dystopia run by corporations. So what do you guys think of the 19 and a half cartoon animals who have run for president both fictionally and who have managed to get real votes in real elections? Let me down in the comments if I miss any. Check out culturallyf.com where we have a sign up form for a newsletter we've started. Keep an eye on that website too because we're going to be turning that into like a real website eventually. Next week on November 11th, we will be at Canference in Ottawa, Ontario. So if you're going to that, let us know, tweet at us, post it in the comments. We'll be there recording an episode live and hanging out. Rusty will come, maybe we'll get Tetanus to come, and we'll post up all about it afterwards. So even if you can't make it to Canference, we'll be shooting an episode there live, so it'll be almost like you were there, but just a few weeks late. I have been your host, RK. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Rusty Shackelfer. Wasn't that episode special? I think it's my new favorite. It was made by these really nice people. If you like any of them, or if you like that episode, or if you like me, like, share, and subscribe. Share with all of your friends. Force them to watch it. Strap them down. And make sure they watch every episode of Culturally F until their eyes bleed. Or, you know, just hit like. Ha <laughs> ha!